Hello and welcome to a special edition of MarathonJourney.com. It's a video that people have been asking for, begging for, pleading for, and it's been a long time coming. So I am going to give you what it is that you want. And that is, what do I carry when I am out on either a very long training run or a race? And so we're going to go over all of the items and electronics that I carry while I'm out doing a marathon or a very long training run. And it all starts with, since this is a video series, the camera. Where do I carry my camera? Well, this is the rig that I carry on my person for every run and for every race. And that is the iFitness hydration belt. And inside the front pouch here is the thing that does all of the video recording and that is the Sony HD and pocket video camera. It is the DSC TX 200 V and the reason that I use this camera is because I have been through a ton of cameras. This camera is shockproof, it's waterproof, nothing slides out, opens up, it is all, whether it is on or off, it is exactly the same. So it uh, is very convenient that way. It has a fairly decent zoom, uh, and always, if you're carrying one of these cameras, turn the digital zoom off. Do optical zoom only, because if you use digital zoom, oh, it's going to be ugly. But this camera is completely waterproof. I can be doused in water. I can jump in the water. It doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt it. And the other thing is, it has not only a replaceable micro SD card, but it has batteries that can be replaced on the run, which is very important if you're out there doing a lot of videos. Now, the reason that I show you this first is because from here on out, we're going to be shooting our long shots with this camera. So I kind of wanted to get it out of the way, but that's uh, where it is. It's always in my front pouch of my iFitness belt, uh, whether I'm on a very short training run, a long run, or running any race, this is the go-to camera. Uh, while I'm doing some of the stand-up videos in that, I will switch off to a different camera, but if it's in a race, if it's at the start corral, if it's on the way to the start corral, if it's at the finish, this is the camera that I'm going to use. And uh, the HD video is 1080p, absolutely superb. Uh, I can dump it over to my video editing program and edit it very easily. And the JPEG shots that it shoots with the still camera are fairly decent. So this is what I use after not only experimenting with tons and tons of cameras, but also as a professional photographer. This is the type of camera that I would recommend. It's very small, it's lightweight, it's compact, it fits in that pouch easily. There are other waterproof cameras out there on the market, but unfortunately they're thicker, they're bumpier, they have lenses that uh, pop out and other things that do things. Don't like them. This is the one that's held up. Let's start out by talking about the iFitness belt itself. It's a great device, but it does need a little bit of help for a marathon. And I have some additions to it uh, that really help it out. One of the things that I like is that it has the toggles for your bib. Nothing is more annoying than to have to put safety pins into a good tech shirt and have your tech shirt get snagged or have the safety pins irritate you and uh, possibly cause some uh, chafing or bleeding. So the uh, bib always goes on here. The front pouch where I keep the camera is made of neoprene. So it's already fairly waterproof. I have a different camera in here now to kind of show you, but it, it's very easy to access while the uh, iFitness belt is on. Inside, I carry an extra AAA battery, so I can always have a battery for my uh, Gym Boss in case it dies in the very unlikely event. And also there is a couple of pouches in here, one of which is a small ID pouch, and then behind it is another divider. Behind that divider, I have a, a BioFreeze a little packet in there in case the BioFreeze isn't offered on the course and I need it. Also, 
are a couple of blister packs. These are the fluid filled blister packs in case you get a blister. Some uh, anti-chafing gel in case uh, you wore off some of your gel during the run. Another small biofreeze packet and money. Money is very important. Also, uh, you might consider carrying your identification with you and a, either a credit card or a uh, ATM card. But I don't like to carry uh, those with me. I figure for 20 bucks I can do just about anything I need to do. And that way, if I should uh, unfortunately somehow lose my belt, I uh, won't have lost quite as much. But uh, this is a little bit larger camera than the Sony that I carry, but even that zips in there very easily. On each side are eight ounce water bottles. Now, I always consider that no matter the temperature, I can easily get 5K out of an eight ounce bottle. So this is somewhere between a 10K and an eight mile rig. Uh, I don't have to worry about any additional hydration uh, on a completely unsupported run out to about eight miles with this belt. Now on a marathon, uh, I sip between stations on these. Sometimes I never have to refill them if the water stations are uh, spaced well and it's a decent day. If it's very hot though, I may end up refilling these at uh, the water stations and it's very easy to do because they have a wide mouth. They go in, they don't uh, flop around, and you don't even know that they're there until you need them. Behind each one of the bottles is a small elastic loop and that elastic loop is meant to uh, stick your gels in. Well, what I do is I have these 30 mil tubes, screw cap tubes, and I dump the contents of an island boost into each one of these. That way it's a lot easier to uh, get down because when I pull off the screw cap, uh, I have a lot wider mouth and I can pretty much just get that down in one swallow. And I screw the top back on, I put it on my belt, and I'm not dropping gel packets all over the race course, which is a lot uh, more eco-friendly and uh, nothing worse than getting a gel pack stuck on the bottom of your shoe. So that's what I do, and it, uh, I don't have to worry about a pack rupturing or uh, dropping it along the way. Now, let me talk about the additions to the iFitness belt. And there are two of them. Uh, one of them is the Amphipod large neoprene pouch, and the other is the large fuel belt zippered pouch. And I've chosen both of these to add to the iFitness belt, and I have what I now consider, for me, the absolute perfect rig. And it took uh, a couple of extra parts and three manufacturers in order to make that work. But in my Amphipod large pouch, which is neoprene, I have in the front compartment my iPod Touch and the iPod Touch is great because I plug in my headphones and I can listen to podcasts or music or the Lolo Fett uh, Jeff Galloway app or I can plug a microphone in here, we'll talk about that in just a little bit, and I can do on-course interviews. Or I can take photos with this and uh, save them for later. And so that is a great thing. It's got plenty of battery. It will easily last all day long. Behind that is my iPhone. And my iPhone is there for a couple of reasons. One for emergencies. Nothing worse than being stuck and need to contact somebody and not have a phone. Also, if something should happen uh, at home or somewhere and uh, somebody needs to get a hold of me, I got my phone. So I'm never without communication unless you're outside of a cell phone area. Now I use it pretty much for that and for live track. The Garmin 620 does live track and so I can use the Garmin 620 to uh, let everybody know where I am. I don't have to worry about whether or not the race has uh, runner tracking. I track myself. Also as a safety feature, it's a wonderful thing. Now I do occasionally use a cell phone for social media while I'm out on the course. And if I do, I have to kick over here to my fuel belt pouch. If I'm gonna use 
a lot of social media, I carry with me a very small, lightweight, extra battery for my phone. And that way, no matter how long I'm out, I know I'm going to have enough battery. If you're running a Disney marathon, I always carry this with me because it takes so long. You've got to get there so early. You're in the corral and the runner area for hours before the race, and then it takes a while to get back. So I have to make sure that I have extra battery with me. Now, on a regular long run or... Uh, a non-Disney marathon or shorter runs, I don't need to carry this with me. This is my fuel pouch, and in my fuel pouch I carry my number one fuel jaw busters or mini jaw breakers that are individually packed. These are around 12 to 15 calories in a single jaw breaker, which means that one of these is great for one mile. Every mile I pop one of these in, my blood sugar stays up, my brain stays happy, and these will get you a long way down the course. Now, there are times when your stomach kind of gets growling, and in that case, a very small jeweler's bag of raisins is great for that. It gives you something to chew on and uh, also helps to uh, settle down those growlings in your stomach. I also keep the small cliff bars. Now you get these at expos or you can sometimes find them in the stores in packs. They're very nice because they fit right here down the side. I also, in case uh, I really need some extra fuel, carry with me an extra island boost, generally in the Valor flavor, which is chocolate, because if I'm going to this one, it's going to be later on in the race, and I need not only that boost that island boost gives me, but I want chocolate, because it just sounds yummy. And then another uh, fuel source that worked really well out on the course is the Honey Stinger Waffle. This one's a vanilla. I happen to love the chocolate. If I carry a Island Boost Valor and a chocolate vanilla or a chocolate Honey Stinger Waffle with me, uh, I am all set to be chocolated up. Now there is one more thing that I use this pouch for and in the back back here you might be able to see there's a small zipper pocket. And in that zipper pocket, I carry my iRig MicCast microphone, which is a fantastic microphone that I can double with either my iPhone or most used with my iPod Touch. And I can get some really great interviews while I'm out either in the corrals, on the course, or in the finish area. And that's tucked in right there. And the other thing about the Sony camera that I talked about is that it has replaceable batteries and I can carry extra batteries with me. They're very small, compact, lightweight. That's three batteries right there in about the same space that that microphone sits. And uh, they can just sit back here in the pouch and uh, I can change the battery while I'm out on the course and make sure that I always have plenty of battery for video. That zips up. Now when you put the uh, iFitness belt on and you make sure that the strap is good and snug. This entire rig carries everything that I need and it doesn't bounce, it doesn't get in the way, it's there, I can reach for things, they're easy to access and uh, everything that I need is right there on my person. Now let's talk about some of the other things that I consider to be essential but you don't necessarily carry on your belt. One of which is if you happen to wear glasses, um, I use specialized running glasses. These are uh, Oakley glasses. They are prescription blended bifocals and they also are um, clear when you're in darkness and they automatically change to sunglasses uh, when uh, you need them. So I don't have to worry about a different pair of glasses. Uh, if it starts getting dark or it's dark at the start, they're perfectly clear. And if they, uh, when the sun starts coming out, they automatically turn to sunglasses. They are extremely light and it's such a joy uh, if you wear glasses to wear these extremely lightweight glasses. Now these aren't uh, terribly cheap. These are the flak jackets and uh, you have to get them of course from your optometrist and getting the blended bifocals in them makes them even more expensive but they are well worth it. Not only for uh, protection 
uh, from the sun and being lightweight, but protection for your eyes from hitting bugs and raindrops and hail and leaves and you name it. Um, I highly recommend if you wear glasses to invest in a specialized set of running glasses. Now, if you're a Jeff Galloway run, walk, run aficionado, you know the Jim Boss. I use the Jim Boss Mini Max, and the reason I use the Mini Max is because I can program uh, multiple different scenarios for any run or a marathon. I can program a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, and uh, I look at the course and say, well, I want to start out with this ratio and when I hit the hill, it should be about this time, change to this ratio. I can do uh, negative splits by having a slower ratio at the start for a warm up and then stiffening the ratios up all automatically without me thinking about it. Or I have all my ratios stored in here. Instead of having to reset the gym boss, I just go back to the menu, select the ratio that I want and off I go. I can do that during a walk break and I never have to miss a break. I have the neoprene cover on this just to protect it because it is plastic and it will scratch and I carry it on a squoosh band courtesy of Kevin Gwynn over at the Extra Mile podcast but I carry this on my left wrist and the thing about the squoosh band is it uh, makes for a convenient place to carry your gym boss and it gives you a great way to wipe the sweat off too right there on the side of your wrist so you don't have to think about it now my latest addition to my left wrist also is the Garmin Vivo Fit now this isn't necessarily a uh, device that uh, you need for running it's a step tracker and it's a motivational device it uh, tracks your sleep it tracks your uh, steps during the day and kind of gives you motivation to go out there and run but one of the things that it does is it always has a watch I don't have to use anything else to check the time the time is right there and since I always wear this the other thing that I always wear when I'm running is a road ID well I've got a road ID here I have the road ID elite and if you take the road ID elite tag and the Rode ID Elite clasp and put it on the Vivo Fit band, you have the perfect combination of a Vivo Fit, a watch, and a Rode ID that you never have to take off your wrist. I keep this on 24 7, seven days a week. I just put the gym boss and the squoosh band on that same wrist and it's always there I don't have to worry about oh did I put my road ID on it's there and then on top of that uh, it gives me uh, some additional motivation by telling me how many steps I've taken during that marathon and I also have the time there and speaking of time a lot of people call these GPS watches, but uh, they do have a watch function, but they are a fitness GPS. The Garmin 620 is my go-to GPS for running. And what does it do? It pairs with my iPhone to give me live track. As soon as the run is over, it automatically uploads it via my iPhone to Garmin Connect or any wireless connection. Uh, it's a great device. It's extremely accurate and it works very well. I don't have to think a lot about it. And it's really, really light. That's always on my right wrist. What's always on my chest is the Garmin heart rate strap and of course this is the Garmin run strap that goes with the 620 that gives you all of your running metrics but I always wear a heart rate strap. Some people say why wear a heart rate strap? Well I'm 55 years old uh, that's what I something that I always think about so heart rate strap I always use and the other is something for your iPod to pump the music or the podcast into your ears. These are your buds Iron Man. They have a cloth cover so they don't tangle and they don't uh, really feel yucky like a lot of the plastic or vinyl ones do. These go in your ears and they stay. They're comfortable. You don't have to worry about them falling out. They will never fall out unless uh, you take them out. Generally, I, if I'm running a marathon, I will put one of them in and leave one of them out. And I will uh, sometimes switch them out depending on which ear is closer to traffic, if there's traffic and I'm on a run. But earbuds 
are fantastic and they have a lifetime warranty. Anything happens, this is like my third pair. I have frayed cords, I've, uh, I've ripped the ends of them off and I send them back and they send me a new pair. Your buds, fantastic for uh, hooking up to your iPod and getting that music into your ears. Now that does it for what I use for races or normal long runs, but there are a couple of other options. And I'm wearing one of them. It's the Nathan Hydration Vest. It uh, has a 70 ounce bladder, so it will get you through almost any long run. I have modified it with a special insulated uh, tube, so it's always there. I don't have to worry about ever reaching down and finding a tube. It has a bite valve on it, so I just reach down, I can get a drink whenever I want to, and it's all there. If I don't want to go to that extreme, and a lot of times when it's hot, uh, 70 ounces on your back with all of this uh, does tend to get a little warm. I uh, go to another Fitletic product, and that's this one right here. And I, all I have to do is take off those two modular pouches from my regular Fitletic belt and slide them on here, and it's ready to go. The thing I like about this is that if you unzip these little pouches here, there is room in here for a 20 ounce bottle and you can put a 20 ounce bottle on each side instead of having the 8 ounce bottles and then you have 40 ounces that you can carry on each side because both sides have a pouch like that and they just zip out and there you go and 40 ounces will get you oh probably it'll easily through uh, a half marathon worth of uh, training run, or if you're going out, oh, maybe 16 or so miles, you might be able to get uh, by with this 40 ounces. So that's a uh, that's an option there. The other thing about this that I like is uh, if you get through with a bottle and you're done with this 20 ouncer, you can uh, simply dispose of it along your running route, zip that back up and it keeps getting smaller as you run. Well, that's what I use for uh, my runs, all the equipment that I carry with me. You don't have to carry that much equipment because obviously I'm doing a video show, I'm doing an audio show, I'm uh, up on social media, so I'm doing a lot of other things that you may not, might not necessarily be doing during a race, but even when I'm doing that, I can carry everything with me very easily and still have a great run. What about you? Are you having great runs? Well, if you use good equipment, it's a lot easier to have a great run. But you're not going to have any kind of run unless you open up that door, put one foot in front of the other. Because if you do that, I'll be seeing you out here on the road. Mm -hmm.